Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm just back from Andorra skiing and my boot saga continues. I've got the Atomics Hawk Magna 110s, which are apparently one of the best boots for wide feet. But I've still got this toe nipping scenario going on, toe crush, because all of these ski boots just seem to bunch your toes up in the front for some reason. And um, I've had boot stretches done by loads of boot fitters and just never had any success. I'll show you now the only success that I have had is this. So my last uh, attempt of doing a width stretch uh, was in fact to make this plug here. And what I did was I stood on the wood with the liner on my foot and basically drew around my foot where it was actually bigger than what the shell of the boot was. And what, what you have to do is you have to use like a paint stripping gun to heat the boot up to around about 120 degrees. And then you have to wedge this in there. And the reason it's in four pieces is because you have to like get the front two bits in, they close up, and then you have to get the back two in and then what I had to do was get a tool to basically force them apart to actually push that section forward and that section back and then to obviously initiate the stretch that way. And these plugs actually work very well because I can actually just uh, flip it upside down like that and use it on the other side. So it's actually worked very well up to now. But the problem I've got now is that to get these boots absolutely really fine tuned is my right toe is slightly longer than my left which is really annoying and um just the foot box in these goddamn ski boots why doesn't somebody make them with a decent sized foot box you end up with your toes just crushed together all day long and uh i find sometimes i go numb so i'll show you what the latest plan is to try and do a toe stretch toe knockout for my big toe on this boot so this is the first step of the experiment i've seen someone else do this on youtube actually so i've just got two very fine bin liners put those inside the boot and what i found was you can't actually get the bin liner right to the toes because when you pull your hand out the bag kind of comes out of your hand so i've just got a couple handfuls of just gravel out of the garden i've put them in the toes to make sure the um bin line it is right down at the toe area which is the area i want to stretch so the next bit of the equation is fill the boots full of this expanding foam but you've got to be a little bit careful not to put too much in because we only really want to mold the toe area so i've gone about halfway up the boot and um i'll let that set now and then pull it out in a wee while well guys, the expanding foam idea did not work. It was in there for ages and I just pulled it out and it was just all still wet and it hadn't gone off. I think it's because there was no air getting to it. But plan two has worked. And I'm just going to do the other boot because I've already tested it on the first boot. So this is the mould that I've done from the first foot there. And you can see it's pretty good actually. It's just a little corner there that hasn't been rounded off but i'm not too worried about that i can i can sort that out it's even got the crease in the top where the uh top of the boot closes there there's like a ridge on the inside so it's molded perfectly so i'll tell you how i've done this one again i've got my little bin liner here and i've just put some gravel in it just to bulk it out and I've used this Fisher chemical cement, mixed it all up, stuffed it in there. And uh, that was the result. So here we go with the next one. So there we are, got it in the boot now. What you've got to do is just um, kind of push it to the front because it's gravel. You can manipulate it down there. Just make sure it's pushed all the way down there and just keep giving the boot a knock just to make sure the gravel is going right to the bottom and it's actually fully filling out all of that toe box area. 
so pretty happy with that i'll just leave that to go off now so this is where i'm up to uh, that's the two molds have come out quite well that one had a little bit missing off the front but luckily i had some uh it's basically it's just like fiberglass uh, polyester core repair paste i managed to put a bit on put it back in the plastic bag put it back in the boot so i'm now going to do the next stage of the project so the next step i've done is to draw around the mold and then what i've done is i've rather than you'll see there's two lines there rather than holding the pen really close to the mold i've done a second line with the pen at a right angle going round which is just going to give me a little bit of increased size and you'll see at the front here where i have my uh, dodgy long toe i've gone out a little bit there and on that side the same just pushed it out a little bit so i'm going to finish off the molds and then get them prepared now for the next stage of the toe punch so guys after last night molding these up to here i decided this morning to extend them a little bit because what i don't want is the boot stretching long ways and nipping in on the width so the present length of the molds now goes right past my widest foot area so i've just basically done that using the same technique the chemical cement a bit of gravel to pack it out and what I've done is I've just cut a slot around the mould there and I've put some string on it because what I don't want is the moulds get jammed in the boot once I do heat them up and start the remoulding process. So now what I've got to do is work out what I'm going to use to punch out the toes and widen them. And what I've decided to use is just some normal chop strand mat glass fibre. The reason being, I can cut that into strips and I can have both sides exactly at the same uh, point. And I can also, you know, quite um, technically mould in that longer toe area on this side. So it's going to be more precise than just covering them in filler and sanding them. Right, so I'm up to the fibreglass in part. Now and you'll see I've cut eight strips, four for each side, some small bits to punch out the toes. And uh, I'm just using a bit of polyester resin for this. So I'll get the first sheets on and then I'll be back. So this is where I'm up to now. I've just put two strips of chop strand mat either side of each mould. So I'm now going to use these small bits just to build up on this toe area and try and punch that out. So that's the present position. Just put them out in the sun just to harden off a little bit before I put some more laminate on. But what you've got to be careful about is not to put too much laminate around this front because that's going to mean a stretch of the entire boot and you're not going to stretch the whole boot long ways doing it like this. So up to now I've got two bits of laminate around the sides and I've got two bits on each area of the toe box. Well guys, I've been sidetracked a little bit today, so these have now hardened and that's the finished articles, the finished moulds, and uh, you can probably see on this one I've got a bit of a knockout on that toe, so I'm just going to buzz the sander over them, get the loose off and see what they're like. Well guys, I'm going to show you what I've done in the next video, but as far as I can see, the toe stretch, the toe box stretch has definitely worked when you look at the two boots there. The one on the left definitely seems to be wider in the toe box at the front compared to the one on the right. Right guys, well I've just done it and um, it's very difficult to video and do this process at the same time. So I'll tell you what I've done. Basically, Black & Decker heat gun. And you have to heat the shell up of the boot in the area that you want to have expanded, which for me was the toe box, up to 
300 Fahrenheit or about 150 Celsius. So I'm using this digital thermometer just to tech, check the temperature as I go. You've got to obviously keep the heat gun moving around the area, otherwise you end up with heat accumulating in one particular spot, which is what you don't want. And as a matter of fact, it was a great idea that I actually ex extended the molds because uh, I managed to use my scissor jack from my C-Class 204 Mercedes, uh, which just absolutely worked a treat. Once I got the jack in there and started winding it, I could actually feel the plug or the mould coming to the end of the uh, boot and coming to a stop, and then I just gave the jack a little nip. So if you haven't got a 204 Series Mercedes, you might have to get one of them in order to do this job and get the jack. <laughs> that might be one option. So anyhow... That boot's completely cold now. I've just been in the house for dinner. It's out here in the cold. And I'll just show you the comparison now of the two tow boxes. And you can probably see there that I have definitely got a increase in width on the tow box on this right foot, right boot. So I will now Undo the jack. Hang on a second, this is hard to do with one hand. You've got to undo the jack. And actually, it was a good idea putting the string into the mould. Uh, but to be fair, because the mould is so heavy, it just kind of like, once you hit the boot, it just popped out. Let's see if this one will do it. It's a bit difficult with the camera as well. There we go. There it's moved, and as you can probably see, I can then just get my piece of string and pull the mould out of the boot. There we go. So the only thing to do now, really, is go and put my liners in and see what they're like. So, hold fire! Well guys, I'm back in the house now and I've just put the liners in. And I'll be honest, there is a noticeable difference in these toe boxes. I mean, my toes now, rather than being all bunched together, I can actually press my toes flat uh, as if they would be when they're not in a ski boot. So they're a lot more comfortable. And you can probably see here, we definitely have a punched out toe area for that big toe of mine on this right side, which always seems to bother me. So up to now, they feel great. So there we have it guys. That was the home experiment ski boot toe punch out. It's probably cost me about 50 euros in materials. I don't think I would have probably got that done any cheaper going to a professional boot fitter. And would I have got the same results? Well, probably not because I've got now molds fitted exactly for my boots and tapered exactly to my feet requirements. The boots feel 100% better in way of the toes. I mean, before, if you can imagine your toes bunched up like that, I'm now able to splay my toes a little bit as if I was in a normal pair of shoes. The right foot, where I had the big toe pressing on the front all the time, I would say it's now comparable to the left foot. I can stand up in a non-skiing position and not have that pressure on the front of that toe. So it definitely seems to have worked. Guys, if you want to try this yourself, go for it at your own risk. It's worked for me. It's been a bit of palaver, but I'm happy I've done it. The boots feel fantastic, especially in that toe box area, which I needed expanding and punching out as I was just fed up with my toes being crushed. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like the channel, click and subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Take care.